Hello, hi. I'm Rose Chibuka Mchiri is my name. Welcome to our learning series. Now, the last video, I talked extensively about how the micro makes you. I did hint on the fact that there is no such a thing as a bad cause. And I went ahead to illustrate uh, extensively as well. I used the example of MDD, uh, music, dance, and drama, how it was ridiculed here in Uganda, and how at the same time it was making uh, a lot of millions of dollars in the United States. That was just an illustration. Now, I want to take it to the next level. When we say the micro makes you, that there is just one small element of that big spectrum of, of course that you studied, around which you are going to build uh, a prosperous career. Now, in this era, we are in 21st century, the year is 2023, and we have trends that are emerging that are increasingly making long learning programs less attractive in favor of short, narrow learning programs. So if you went to the internet now and punched in micro-credentials, that concept, micro-credentials, we are in the era where Increasingly, professionals are learning just in time. Meaning, this GJIT concept, just in time. I go to learn a skill to acquire knowledge just as when I need it. And I go and acquire specifically that. So... If I need a skill in video editing, mm -hmm. I go specifically and enroll. It could be a two weeks course, short course. It could be a one month. It could be three months. It could be a couple of days. Oh, by the way, some could be just a couple of hours. And the point is, okay, I want to learn how to use this specific data analysis package. So I go and learn that because that's what I need to be effective at my job. So these days we have that new concept, micro-credentials. What does that mean when we say the micro-credentials are becoming a popular phenomenon. I was just checking, and the European Union have just developed a policy guideline for ma mainstreaming micro-credentials in their economy, in their society. And micro-credentials also mean <clears throat> that I can accumulate a number of short courses, credentials, and accumulate them into a diploma, into a degree, without having enrolled for a specific degree program, which, is, which has a defined period of, say, three years, four years, whatever it may be. Now, this is an aspect about careers that we should be noting, that should inspire us. Now, in reality, what does this mean? For someone who is not necessarily looking for papers, but is looking for what it takes for them to make it and make it real big in the world of work. It means 
that more and more professionals, more and more people are going to be looking for micro credentials for small courses, short courses that eventually translate into a big and effective and competitive package as far as career profile is concerned. This is something I invite you to think about. It's usually very rare for me to talk about this subject and not use the example of my wife. See, for quite, for over 10 years, my wife used to be a classroom teacher in university. She taught mass communication. And then one day, she comes back home and, and tells me, you know what, Ambrose, I, I feel I want to learn baking. I want to learn to bake cakes. So she goes to a vocational and technical training institute and she enrolls for a two weeks course. Two weeks! And they would study in the afternoons. Specifically, it was at Jimmy Sekasi Institute in Kabalagala. So, she completes the course and then she starts applying at home. Baking cakes, baking cakes, baking cakes. And she perfected the art. Today as we speak, she's a big time player in the marketplace. Oh, bad news. She eventually, thanks to COVID-19 and the associated lockdowns, she found a new passion, a new economic sense in the world of baking. Mm -hmm. Two weeks course, becoming the enabler for a career shift. That's how important micro-credentials are in this era. And the question only remains one. What are you looking for? Are you looking to accumulate papers? Or are you looking to build a prosperous career? It could be a business career or whatever it is. That question the response to it will determine the strategy that you take. If, you remember I talked about career guidance in the previous video? This is important because if your vision is, for example, to become a scholar, for example, you, you want to become a mainstream career professional who must have the papers in order for industry, for employers to employ you, then you must seriously consider the path of accumulating the papers. There's virtually no shortcut. I have been around universities and I know for a fact that if you are, for example, to build a career in, in, in academia and become a professor, become a researcher and so on, these papers, the academic credentials, become a vital part of the journey. So you will not create shortcuts with it. But you see, majority of people are not looking to building, you know, their, their careers in that direction. And the, the, the guidance I'm providing here is largely for those majority who are basically looking for one thing, that 
area in life where I am going to build a prosperous career. It could be in business, and there are also fields of formal employment where they don't mind so much your academic qualifications, but they mind so much what you can do. They mind so much the value you can add to them. They don't care where you learned something or how you learned it, but they care, they only care that you know it, you can fix their problems, you can propel their vision and objectives. As long as you can do that, they don't care where you learned it from. You are the person I'm speaking to because that's how I have built my personal career. Most of the things I know, most of the skills I trade in the marketplace, most of what my clients need from me, I never studied it in any form or course. I am a product of a very powerful principle that I want to share with you right now. And that is one of the 10 attributes of 21st century careers is this. In the 21st century, formal education may earn you a job, but it is self-education that will build you a prosperous career. I am largely a product of self-education. You'll ask me, what do you mean self-education, Ambrose? This is what I mean. I mean that I don't need permission from anybody to tell me what I have to learn, to tell me what I can learn. I do not need permission from anybody to authenticate what I know and what I can do. No. So, what do I do? As long as I see something in front of me, it could be in a book, it could be a course online, it could be a program on television, it could be in a seminar, it could be, by the way, in a movie. I've learned a lot of content in ordinary movies and I use these contents and they are wow in my trainings. So as long as I can learn anything and that thing adds value to the value that I give to other people so that I add value to them in order for me to receive value from them in terms of being rewarded, then I pursue that. That's what I mean when I say I'm a product largely of self-education. The principle is, I repeat it, in the 21st century, formal education may earn you a job. I'm saying may because I cannot guarantee, because it's not a sure deal. What I'm speaking is perhaps more common sense to you than to myself. You might know it more than I do. It's not a guarantee. The only guarantee for my education will have you is it will give you papers. That is a guarantee. So, formal education may earn you a job, but it is self-education that will build you a prosperous career. What this suggests is that formal education is a starting point. I think in economics they would argue it is a necessary but not sufficient condition. It, it, it could be a necessary condition <clears throat> because you need a certain minimum level of skills in being able to read, being able to write, being able to analyze things 
and understand them and comprehend even sophisticated concepts. So you need a certain level of literacy. And formal education comes in very handy on that. But once you have this certain level of literacy, then you use that literacy to navigate through anything you can possibly learn. So that's how I have been able to deal with a broad spectrum of audiences and clients in business, in civil society, in faith institutions, including on some deep matters, spiritual, you know. And why? Because I apply the basic skills I got from formal education and learn whatever. I need to learn in order for me to add value to myself. Because when I add value to myself, I become then somebody who can add value to other people. And the <laughs> equation of life is such that in order for you to get for yourself, you must give of yourself. The value of what you give determines the value of what you receive. So where does that equation begin? Self-education. That is going to be key. So if that is the case, then micro-credentials, meaning those small learning programs, learning opportunities. If today, like I said, the, I used the example, what I need is to enroll for a course in data analytics, short course. It could be introduction to data analytics. And it might take me two weeks. And then I see another online course on understanding urban social psychology. And it takes maybe one month. And then I could see another course on market research. That could be another one month. So if I go on, by the way, if, if you notice, the, the kind of courses I have been talking about, they are imaginary, but I know they are out there. If you go online, you'll find them. I'm very sure about that. So if I combine these, at the end of the day, there may be 10 courses that I have covered in a space of one year. But those 10 courses, when I combine them, they will make me highly competitive in the marketplace as an organizational development consultant, as a career mentorship and career strategy consultant, as a leadership trainer, and so on and so forth. So it becomes a matter of choice. What am I looking for? Am I looking for academic accolades and credentials? Or am I looking for building my capacity to add value to other people in order for me to receive value back? And very importantly, in my case, to make a difference in other people's lives. Don't forget, my mission is a simple one helping individuals and organizations to discover their potential and become the best they can be. That's what I give. And it's because of that that I receive back. And the more I develop my capacity to give that, the more, almost automatically, the more the value I receive from society 
keeps accelerating. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like its content, click the like button, click subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment or question. I'll be happy to have an ongoing conversation with you. See you next time in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.